Hey everyone, my name is Nadalka Prescott and I'm so excited to participate in the Panama Jazz Festival 2021. Oh my gosh, what a year 2020 is. But here we are on the other side of it and I'm so grateful, so grateful for many things, but I definitely want to offer up gratitude to the organizers of the Panama Jazz Festival, specifically to Aileda and Carlos and of course to Patricia and Danilo. I am the daughter of proud Panamanians. My mother is Shirley Prescott and my father is Roy A. Prescott who passed away in 2019. When I was invited to do this presentation, I immediately thought of my dad and wanted to use this as a tribute to him. My father, Roy Alonso Prescott, Roy A. Prescott, was born and raised in Colón, Panama. Um, I think it was 8th Street. And he was um, brought up in the church, specifically Christ Church by the Sea. And through that experience, he was an acolyte, and that's where he entered into music, specifically into classical music. I also want to pay homage to my grandparents, specifically on my father's side, to Humphrey and Alejandrina Prescott. You know, as with most Panamanians that I know, at least black Panamanians that I know who are of my generation, we trace our heritage back into the Caribbean because of the building of the canal. And so we trace back to Barbados and Jamaica. We even believe that we may be related to Samuel Jackman Prescott, who's on the $20 bill in Barbados. And so bringing it back to my father, my father was raised in Colón, Panama on 8th Street and he attended Christ Church by the Sea. It was in that church that my father first connected with music. He was an acolyte there, uh, his foundational life, all of his leadership and all of his exposures and his his friendships and his fellowships were all through Christ Church by the Sea, I guess at that point. In the 1970s, my father applied to and attended New York University, where he received his bachelor's and his master's in music education. I believe for my father's master's, he studied and did a focus on esoteric oratorios. He was a classical baritone singer. One who also was a member of the New York Metropolitan Opera. If we think about the 1970s and the idea of this black Latino male classical singer participating in the New York Metropolitan Opera, in this day and age, I receive a lot of pride and inspiration from that. Also in the 1970s, my father formed a community ensemble called the Roy Prescott Chorale. This chorale was comprised of Afro-Latinos, Afro-Caribbeans, and African-American folks. The chorale toured the Caribbean and Central America, putting on concerts for local communities. The funds raised at the concerts stayed with the community. My father also put on yearly concerts in Brooklyn, New York. He wanted to provide the community with a perspective on classical music that was not traditional. He had an all-black ensemble, classical singers, soloists, and at one point he also had an all-black orchestra. <laughs> Now, bring it to this day and age, when everyone is trying to figure out how to be equitable, my father had figured it out since the 70s. 
And this is the radical nature of my father that I want to highlight and that from which I have such a strong foundation in terms of music and social responsibility. And I want to thank him for that. As much as I am here today singing before you, I had to let you know about my father, who is literally the foundation of my musical experience. I also want to shout out to my mom. She's awesome. My next tribute should be to her. I heard I didn't know what time it was on WBGO, New York City. And it was sung by Cecile McLaurin Solvant. And that was it. After that, I put it in my repertoire. And so I present it here today.
I'm so thankful to Patricia and Danilo. So sending you much love, Patty. I'm also thinking of a moment when I was talking with Danilo and I was saying, Danilo, please tell me what song shall I learn? I want to connect more with the music of my heritage. And so this next song, Besame Mucho, was one of those songs that Danilo told me to learn. And I'm so grateful that he did. Besame Mucho. Como si fuera esta noche la última vez. Bésame, bésame mucho. Que tengo miedo a perderte, perderte después. Muy cerca, mirarme en tus ojos, verte junto a mí. Piensa que tal vez mañana yo ya estaré lejos, muy lejos de ti. Bésame, bésame mucho. Como si fuera esta noche la última vez. Bésame, mucho. Que tengo miedo y perderte, perderte después.
The first time I participated in the Panama Jazz Festival, I was overwhelmed. I was in awe and I was fascinated at the fact that for the first time in my life, I was engaging with Panama, not through my parents, but as a student of the New England Conservatory. I had so much pride that I was able to represent my school and also represent my family at the same time. And so here, returning again, I'm overjoyed.
Some of my earliest memories are grounded in music. When my father was a student at New York University, I was with him a lot. And so I actually attended classes with him, rehearsals and his private lessons. He studied with Professor Cesare, Cesare Longo. And my father tells me that his teacher wanted to see if I was musical. And so he played a scale on the piano, but stopped at the seventh note without resolving it to that last note. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti. And my father said that I sang, da. And I don't think I was five years old, he said. And his professor said, she's musical. I think at that point, my father said, ah, let me work with this. And so I'm grateful that he put me in piano lessons from that early age. And then eventually, you know, as a junior high school student, I had him as my music teacher, where he taught me theory. We could break down scales, build scales. We sang in four part harmony in the junior high school, Philippa Schuyler. The school was rated number two in the city and my father's choir was number one in the city. It was a well known fact that there was this school of black and Latino children in Bushwick, Brooklyn, New York, who was so well trained by this man, Roy A. Prescott. As I shared before, my presentation today is a tribute, a tribute to my father. And I actually wanna end this set with a tribute to my father, our creator. My tribute was written by Andre Crouch and it just talks about gratitude. And so today I leave you in the spirit of gratitude with the song, My Tribute.
Thank you everyone for tuning in. This was my presentation for the Panama Jazz Festival. As well as highlighting my father, I definitely want to show and express love to my mother, Shirley E. Prescott. And also to Aleda and Carlos and definitely to Patricia and Danilo. I pray that you will enjoy the other presentations that will come through for this festival. Have an amazing 2021 and be well. So after recording my tribute to my father, I wanted to come back and share a couple more thoughts with you. As you see, I have a classical background, thanks to my father, that I'm completely appreciative of. But I find myself now singing more modern contemporary music. Um, I sing a lot of gospel music and I have a love for jazz. Now that transition from classical music to those styles was uh, one of the hardest things I've ever done as a musician. As a classical musician, everything was on paper. All the notes, all the nuances, um, any additional melismas were written in the paper. And then I personally couldn't figure out how to get to that place where it would come freely and naturally from me. My journey from classical music to more modern styles of improvisation had a lot to do with my ear. Um, I rely on oral tradition even to teach. I learned how to cook rice and peas from watching my mother. I learned a lot of things from watching and listening. And so that feels like a natural process for me to kind of internalize the music. And so I chose to move a little bit more in that when it comes to improvisation. Of course, there are exercises that I work with, but I want to be able to hear the music and feel the music and be able to express it from that sense. One of the interesting things was I noticed that I was having a difference in my rhythmic feel. Um, and I think it has a lot to do with the fact that I come from an Afro-Latina tradition. Singing more African-American contemporary improvisation, I realized, like I said, that my rhythm was different. And then I also started to realize that anytime I reharm something or if I remake a song, there's a 12-8 going in me. I'm always singing to the da, 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 da. That, 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 that. And I started to realize and contemplate on how much that was affecting me when I would try and sing gospel music. And I think it brings a, an awesome um, difference in the way that I sing and the way I approach. But then of course it's important to authentically connect with the music. I actually started with Ella Fitzgerald and from Ella Fitzgerald I went into Rachelle Farrell. And from Rachel Farrell, I went into Kim Burrell. And from Kim Burrell, I went into Legacy. I realized that I liked hearing female singers who had a strong sense of harmony and could express it um, melodically. And one of the things I also noticed is that they tend to be people who play keys. Um, I'm not sure about Legacy, but I know Rachel Farrell surely does. And so does Kim Burrell. And so my journey to uh, improvisation and to feeling a little bit more fluid about it right now, it took some time. I would honestly say it took probably around 20 years before I got to a place of feeling that it was more natural. See, the beauty about singing gospel music is these are traditions as there are all kinds of traditions through the world. And when you were born and raised in a culture, you sit in the culture, you hear it the same way that like I sit and I watch my mother every Sunday make her rice and peas or arroz con pollo. It's the same way I feel about how those who were raised in the black American church just grew up hearing this sound. And so for me, I had to do a little bit of translation, but the spirit is there. 
I share this with you because we all enter music from different entry points. And process is real, you know. Allow ourselves the patience to dig into our art, learn our voices, connect with our voices, figure out your range, and see if you can stretch it on both directions. One of the things that I also do is sing on the vowels and find the different shapes and the sounds of how I would like to express them. You know, am I singing ah, ah, e, e, o, u? I take the time and shape those because personal style is, is the goal that we all want. We pull from many people, but ultimately we want to be able to authentically and fully express ourselves. I share my journey with you because we all enter music from our own specific points. Me, I came from classical music and started going into more contemporary Black American, specifically gospel and jazz. But I also want to honor the traditions that I come from, the ones that offer me salsa, that offer me calypso, that offer reggae, and all those wonderful combinations and how they are expressed through me. Some of them come easier than others, and some of them I had to work at. And so I want to encourage you to have your own process, to be patient in your process, to be committed to your process. And you will see that you will begin to reap the fruits of your labor incrementally. So be encouraged. You see it for yourself and never compare yourself to anyone else. Anytime I see someone whose sound is like one that I'm striving towards, I simply honor it in that way. It's something I'm striving towards. I honor the beauty in it. But then I also honor the beauty in what I've been given. So I encourage you in this process of music and in finding your own voice, your beautiful, wonderful voice, the depths, the nuances, the, the range of it. Explore it. Figure out how your vowels are shaped, how you sing them, how you want to sing them. You can craft your own sound. And that's the amazing thing about music. You can craft your own sound as a combination of all the beautiful things that you are and are into. So enjoy the process.